Welcome back to the Grand Solar Minimum channel. Today's Wednesday, October 10th, 2019. Let's take a look at our solar wind sitting at 461.8. <clears throat> That's elevated from last night. A density of 1.6. Our sun is blank again. That's now seven days consecutive without sunspots. We are now sitting at 206 days for 2019 without sunspots. Take a look at our TCI, still unchanged at 4.36. Our KP indices right now are just below storm levels at a four and our 24 hour max is also at a four. And let's take a look at the SDO a little bit closer here. Uh, right now we are not seeing any coronal holes or any kind of sunspot activity at this current time. There is some minor solar wind that we are expecting by the 12th of October, uh, much like what we're seeing right now. And the only explanation I can give you guys for why we're seeing KP indices of four right now, uh, it has to be a crack in the magnetic shield. And we get these from time to time, these unexpected um, solar increase winds and stuff like that. So uh, this is not part of that corrodal hole that we were showing you in the southern region that is due between the 11th tomorrow and and uh, saturday as well so all right let's go ahead and get into your national forecast before we head off today taking a look at the current power outage situation um we are now at 638,719 customers uh without power that is the latest on those numbers and we will continue to monitor the situation as today is day two without power in this area. Um, last night we reported about it. And yes, 800,000 customers could be affected, but that doesn't count the amount of people per household. So we could be dealing with numbers in the millions as far as people that are affected by this uh, current storm. So we'll keep our eyes on this situation, much to monitor on this. Let's take a look at our radar for today. It is a mess in the Northern Plains. Right now, we're seeing the heavy snow starting to fall in South Dakota, heading northwards to North Dakota. Nebraska's got some mixed uh, precipitation. Scotts Bluff is expecting snow showers later today. Still snowing in Wyoming. Cheyenne is now underneath some showers as we speak. Denver, Colorado has caught just a little bit thus far, but here in Kansas, if you noticed there just a minute ago, on this last uh, run on the radar, if we go backwards, let's take a look. Watch these storms just kind of really take off when it gets past Wichita. So Kansas, we're dealing with thunderstorms, Missouri, uh, Jefferson City, possible flash flooding, possible today. Lots of rain still to come there. Uh, Davenport, Iowa, Cedar Rapids, Waterloo, as this storm will continue to and, and if you notice here in the last part of this run when we get here to Aberdeen uh, or Aberdeen yeah Aberdeen uh, we are watching this storm really pick up I mean it just instantly gets worse right over the city here so this storm will continue to intensify as it moves east towards the Minnesota border Fargo right now that rain snow line you guys can clearly see it so temperatures are continue are expected to continue to drop <clears throat> and honestly um, we're not done by any means they're still expecting this is where the bulk of the snow is going to fall for um, much of North Dakota right now it's starting they're still expecting up to three feet of snow in the far northeast corner of Nebraska. Okay. Let's zoom in real quick so we know what we're talking about here. Zoom in. I'll give you some towns to look at. So, guys, if you live in Langdon, Cavalier, Grafton, even Devil's Lake, all right, these are the areas, Park River, Edmore, these are the areas, Lakota, I expect to see the two to three feet of snow in this particular region. Uh, the worst of the snow is yet to fall. 
And as this radar continues to move further east, this storm picks up some serious storm uh, intensification here, guys. So just here in the past couple of hours, things are starting to pick up in central and eastern North Dakota. And like I said, we're still expecting two to three feet of snow in that region that I'm showing you right now. Let's get the handy dandy blue arrow out, huh? This is where I'm expecting the three, two to three feet in this corner up here. So one and a half to two feet of snow is almost a shoe in for this area, but possibly we could see areas getting up to three feet of snow. Uh, South Dakota, not, not as bad as once forecasted, still expected to get between three to five inches and five to eight inches for the most part of all of South Dakota. Right now, Minnesota, uh, the east, the west, the east, if I could talk, the western part of Minnesota is expected to get almost a foot through Saturday. But right now, they're an all rain event. Temperatures are still warm enough for rain, and it hasn't been as cold for as long in Minnesota as it has been in North Carolina. So that's another reason why I think we'll see the snow pile up in uh, North Dakota, parts of northeast North Dakota as well. So let's take a look at all the watches that we have. And boy, the central part of the country is lit up. Winter storm warnings all over North Dakota and South Dakota, parts of Wyoming. We have winter storm uh, watches in the same states. Colorado is included with this, Nebraska. And then that, that darker box in between the light blue, that is freeze warning. So uh, Nebraska, Kansas, parts of Colorado, uh, we are looking at a freeze warning, and this could symbol also another end to another part of our country's grow season. So the northern plains, the central plains, and almost the Great Lakes here, we could see cold enough temperatures also across Wyoming, Missouri, Illinois. Uh, that could shut it all down this weekend, folks. Uh, here is a look at our maximum temperatures for today. These are highs in the Northwest. Uh, let me zoom this out a little bit so you can see where the temperature graph is. Bring that down, there we go. So you see the purple te teens and 20s. Teens and 20s, high temperatures, October 10th. That's right. <clears throat> very, very, very cold air for this time of year. Low temperatures tonight, well, it's pretty chilly out throughout the whole United States, but some of these areas don't even change their temperatures. Very pleasant in the south, Texas, Oklahoma, Louisiana, Arkansas, Florida. You guys are living the dream down there overnight. Uh, northeast, starting to feel a little bit more like late fall overnight. And I think the sweet spot for the perfect overnight temperatures is probably right there in the Ohio Valley, Tennessee Valley as well. So, uh, but yeah, lots of cold air coming with this system. This is what we're going to expect today. You see all the snow and the mixed precipitation, thunderstorms across the Midwest. Uh, especially over Missouri, Arkansas, and Oklahoma. Showers and storms off the east coast near Boston, that little nor'easter without the snow is affecting that area right now as we speak. And I did say something about this early in the week, how we could be affected by windy rain and some slight coastal flooding. And that is exactly what's happening, folks, with that system that was had a 20% chance of development. It's not really going to do much. The waters are too cold up there. Um, and I'm not even showing you guys the hurricane outlook because the two systems that are in the northeast have a 10% chance of developing in five days. The system in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean is no longer even being mentioned. So right now, folks, we are free of any kind of hurricane or any kind of storm at this moment. Now, tomorrow night, I'll go over the GFS outlook and see if we can see any storms popping up. But in the next 10 days, as far as the tropics and the Atlantic goes for hurricanes, we are in the clear. However, I do believe that we will start to see chances for more of these snowless nor'easters for the rest of the fall heading into the winter. This is tomorrow's forecast. That system is still parked right over North Dakota. Mixed precipitation in Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Michigan and mainly rain for the northeast thunderstorms across the south as well and if we take a look at saturday as well more thunderstorms possible 
for the Midwest, Tennessee, Kentucky Valleys. More mixed precipitation in Minnesota and Wisconsin. And, of course, still some snow falling in North Dakota and South Dakota. Now, Saturday, they are calling for some pretty heavy snow. So that's why we're still expecting anywhere from two to three feet of snow through Saturday, even though we look at the current radar and it does not look like a storm that is producing two to three feet of snow at this time. But have some patience. It looks like Friday and Saturday are going to be the heaviest snowfall for that area of North Dakota that we were just talking about. Uh, other than that, guys, we really don't have a lot to talk about as far as uh, any major uh, weather systems that is going to wreak havoc across the country other than this snowstorm here in the Northern Plains. Some thunderstorms across the Midwest into the weekend. So very wet part of the week here is going to be Friday, Saturday, possibly Sunday for the majority of the central and eastern part of the United States. Meanwhile, in the west, high and dry, it literally and we will also continue to watch the fire danger that we have uh, alerted you guys about the other day. In fact, here is a look one more time at the watches. Uh, the areas that have power taken out right now, right here, is still under fire danger. So red flag warning in effect here. Nevada as well. Southern California now starting to get under fire danger. That was not there yesterday. Let's check out power outages. Interesting enough, Edison County, or I'm sorry, Southern Edison. Last night we reported 26,000 people without power. That number has dropped to now only 958. So there is some good news there. Uh, this total would be closer to 650,000 have those numbers that held up from last night. All right, that's going to do it for me this morning, guys. Make sure you tune in tomorrow morning for another solar update and then 9 o'clock Eastern time, we'll have another Grand Solar Minimum news update. And if there's any breaking news, I'm Mari or myself will make sure we report anything that needs to be reported back to you guys. All right, that's going to do it for us today. Hope everyone has a great day, and we'll talk soon. Do you like this show? Give us a thumbs up. Want to support us more? Share to your favorite social media platform. Buy a t-shirt or become a Patreon. All links are in the description below.